In this demonstration, we model and animate a recreated version of the Beijing National Stadium, designed by the Swiss architecture firm Herzog and de Meuron. This stadium is home to the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, China, and has been nicknamed the Bird's Nest due to its architecture. This project was recreated in Formsy to highlight features such as importing aerial images from Google Earth, tools for site development and quick context modeling, parametric stairs from 2D paths, truss work, space frames, and fabric surfaces. Structural and aesthetic framing derived from the original massing model, and the animated roof assembly that easily follows the double curved shape of the stadium. Observe for yourself the vast potential of Form Z in modeling, rendering, and animation as we demonstrate this recreation of the Beijing National Olympic Stadium. Let's get started. We begin by selecting the ellipse drawing tool and just simply quickly uh, generate an elliptical circular shape and extrude that up to the height that we want. There are basically three ways to modify the object after it's created. Just simply right click on it and we can edit the controls which allow us to graphically move the different uh, parameters of that object such as radius and height values. If we right click on the object we can also query the parameters which means uh, I can type in numeric information. So you get the best of both worlds of being able to either graphically or numerically control the shape and form of your object third way of modifying the object would be to move points or segments or faces on the object. For example, I'll select the top face and I'll simply scale that top face to make it larger. And now you can see we can create a little taper uh, for our cylindrical type object. Now I want a double curved surface on top, so you notice in the primitive tools we have cylinders, spheres, cones, and more complex shapes such as a hyperbolic paraboloid. And I can quickly generate that and move that into position. And then using the trim tool, you can see it's a pair of scissors that I can actually cut one object using the other object. So I can trim the double curved surface to chop off the top half of the cylinder to create a 3D solid with a double curved surface on top. I'll use the rounding tool set to the radius I need. Simply click on the edge to give it the rounded radius that we need. And there we have the pretty much a basic overall form of the bird's nest stadium. We'll give it a transparent color. To sort of see the scale and magnitude of the size of this form, uh, we can turn on some uh, 3D people and maybe get into more of an eye level perspective view. And our outer massing is now complete. You can use the FormZ Google Earth plugin to import an aerial image into FormZ and use that for site development. Just put in your search criteria or uh, longitude and latitude and just navigate to get the proper view that you want in the Google Earth application. Then we go back into the Form Z application and run the Google Earth plugin. What that allows us to do is it'll read the current position that you're at in Google Earth and import an image and map it onto a flat polygon. Now this is an object just like any other object in Form Z that has an image map mapped onto it. So we can move and resize it. Uh, we can uh, do modeling operations on it. For example, I can draw a flat polygon for the shape of a water feature there and have a trim right through to cut out that section. Uh, we can draw a flat polygon for some water. And to create some uh, relief in the elevation there, we can use the lofting tool in Form Z and simply loft a nice surface from the edge of uh, the aerial image to the edge of our water line there. We can also do some other site developments such as uh, sidewalks and maybe some grass areas. Uh, just simply use any of the drawing tools in Form Z to draw right on top of uh, that uh, aerial image. So maybe put a little uh, grass feature over here to simply use a spline drawing tool uh, and create the shape that we want. In addition, we can also uh, generate some of the surrounding context buildings. Uh, just simply uh, start off with some basic geometry such as extruding a rectangular shape to trace the outline of that building. And then using the additive and subtractive insertion tools, I can draw on the face of any object and pull up to add volume, or I can draw on the face and push down to subtract volume from the object. And of course, uh, we do have access to moving the different topological levels, so I can grab a face and move it, or maybe grab a simple segment. So you can see we can very quickly and easily generate uh, a lot of the surrounding context buildings for our site without taking away from our valuable project time. 
In addition, uh, we can take an image map and just use the color tool and apply image maps to any of those objects. For example, here we have the uh, water cube. Uh, we have an architectural rendering of that building. That's where all the water events will take place in the 2008 Summer Olympics. So we can just take that image and map it right onto that building. All right, one other way to bring in um, objects would be to uh, import them from other programs. One of the many ways of importing 3D models from other programs would be to use the 3D warehouse. We go back to Google Earth and we turn the 3D building option on to sort of navigate around and see if there's any 3D buildings that have already been created for us. And there's the National Indoor Stadium. So we go to the 3D warehouse and we can download either a Google SketchUp, Google Earth, or a Collada file. Then we simply import that model into Form Z. Now that we have the context of the site created, let's go to a perspective view. Maybe turn the fog option on to create sort of a vignette type scene that sort of fades off into the background. And let's go back to our uh, massing object here. Let's say we want to hollow out the inside or sort of shell that solid uh, to create a wall thickness uh, based on the shape that we have. Just simply select the parallel tool, give it the offset thickness you want, and click on the object. To see the result of that operation, we can generate a flat plane and use the section tool to actually do a section cut of the object to cut it into two pieces. And then we'll just rotate one half away and maybe give this a solid white color so we can see that the inside of the solid has been hollowed out, giving us a uniform wall thickness. Let's undo a couple steps back. Uh, Forms has unlimited undos. Go back to the original 3D solid object that we had. And let's create a second solid object and maybe make it a little smaller, a smaller radius. And then what we can do is use the Boolean difference tool and actually subtract one solid from the other. So we'll take our outer massing and subtract the inner massing from it, subtract one solid from the other to sort of hollow out the insides. And then to see the result of that operation, once again, we'll just maybe generate a line, or in this case, we'll do a flat plane. And with the section tool, we can cut the object into two pieces. And then we can rotate the one half in order to see the resulting operation, giving us sort of a non-uniform uh, thickness for the wall, for the outside of uh, the stadium form. Let's undo a couple steps. And uh, one more thing we want to do here is cut an opening in the top for the roof. So we'll take a 2D profile for the opening, extrude that into a 3D solid object, and then use our difference tool again to subtract that solid to difference or cut out the opening for the roof.